My research has to do with sleep. How much time do we sleep? Well, we spend about one third of our lives, of our sleeping lives, dreaming, and one third of our total lives, sleeping. If you look at psychiatric disorders, schizophrenia, anxiety disorder, depression, all of these are actually presaged, they're preceded by sleep disorders. Almost every psychiatric disease, there is some kind of sleep dysregulation. Either people are sleeping too long or too briefly. There are lots of awakenings at night and there's not enough restful sleep. So for the last 20 years, I've been interested in why we sleep, what is the mechanism behind sleep, and how can we normalize it? Because the idea here is, if you can normalize the sleep dysregulation, maybe a lot of these other symptoms will be alleviated. So we started looking at the centers that control sleep and waking. And those centers are located deep in the brain, and it is a system that's preserved in phylogeny, that is, all kinds of animals have it, all kinds of mammals have it, and it has been studied extensively. However, we recently discovered a new mechanism that explains a lot. What we've managed to find is that the cells in these areas are connected by gap junctions. They're connected by little channels with each other. They don't have chemical synapses where a cell touches another, squirts transmitter across a gap and activates the cell. What they have is a clear channel so that all kinds of ions and substances can actually flow from one cell to the other to the other, depending on the network. That makes them all fired together, okay? So the idea here is coherence or being able to clap together. For example, an audience, when they're clapping, if they're all clapping together, you hear it louder than if they're clapping at different times. When the brain is clapping together, you're alert. When the brain is not clapping together, you fall asleep. Okay? So that mechanism is totally new. Nobody had ever realized that this was the way that, for example, some types of anesthetics work. Anesthetics that break this coupling actually slow down the brain and put you to sleep. For example, halothane is, is an inhalant anesthetic that will put you to sleep very quickly. Propofol is another anesthetic that injected intravenously puts you to sleep in seconds. There's a new stimulant out called modafinil, which is used for the treatment of narcolepsy. This is a disease where people basically fall asleep uh, at the drop of a hat, and if they're too excited, they'll not only fall asleep, but they'll also lose muscle tone. So they'll collapse, and, it'll, and that's called cataplexy of narcolepsy. Narcolepsy is the disease of excessive daytime sleepiness. This substance, when given to narcoleptics, allows them to function during the day, allows them to um, drive and to sleep properly at night, but also wake up in, in a timely fashion in the morning. So this new mechanism we've been exploring also is related to another mechanism which has to do with how the brain works in general. The brain works like an orchestra. It works by frequency modulation. It works by sending music from one section of the orchestra to the other. If you are standing there with your eyes closed, your brain is kind of bopping away at 10 per second. It's kind of oscillating. It's like an engine turning over about 10 cycles per second. If you fall asleep, you go down eight, six, four, three cycles per second, you're out cold. There's no memory, there's no thought, there's no action. 90 minutes into that, you start dreaming. Your brain speeds up and goes to 20, 40 hertz. 40 cycles per second, the brain is really activated. When the brain switches into REM sleep every 90 minutes, it paralyzes your body. It doesn't want you to act out your dreams. And so the only thing acting out your dreams are your eyes. So, so your eyes are going 100 miles an hour, depending on dream content, 
That's because eye muscles are the only ones that are not paralyzed. So when you dream, only your eyes are going rapidly, but the brain is also very fast. It's going at 20 to 40 per second, and it's very activated. So the idea here is that every 90 minutes, the brain must need some sort of activation, and that's why we dream. At the end of the night, we wake up from a dreaming episode, and our brain becomes alert again, firing at 20 to 40 per second. If we get drowsy in the afternoon, we're going down to 10, and if we go to sleep, we're going to 8, 6, etc. So the brain is working in this range between low frequency and high frequency activation. In order to get that high frequency activation, you need that electrical coupling. You need those cells firing together at once in order to keep these rhythms going. And so our, our novel findings have to do with basically what keeps you alert and what can wake you up, for example, from anesthesia. And so I think that, uh, that this finding is going to revolutionize the way anesthet anesthetics work. It's going to revolutionize the way we understand sleep. And some of these drugs I think we'll be able to use for treating the sleep disorders that are associated with diseases like schizophrenia, anxiety disorder, and depression.